Hey Disruptors, this is producer Tyler and I just wanted to let you know that this is going to be a little bit of a different episode. I kind of wanted to have some fun with Eric and Michael as if I didn't have enough already and send them a variety of questions right on the spot. Normally for podcasts, we tend to prep for them and really come at you with as much value as we can. But this time I was like, I'm just going to ask you guys a bunch of random questions about business and life and everything else. So if you've ever wondered what the, is on these guys' mind while they're in the shower, this is the episode for you. You can also check out all the other questions in the description below. Thanks for listening, and I'll disrupt you later. Welcome to the Disruptance Podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric Forney and Michael Bounds. What's the last shower idea that you guys got? The last shower idea? You know, my head went first to like a baby shower or a wedding shower. Or I don't something know what like shower that. you're talking about. I'm still trying to figure yeah, it out. Yeah, I think what he means is what was the last idea you got that was genius while you were in the oh, shower? Oh, okay. Oh, I don't know. Shower idea. Okay. Um, you know what? I get a lot of clarity because I'll read. I listen to the I listen while to you're in the shower when I'm in the Yeah, me too, weird? man. Me too. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> so I listen I, to to stuff in the shower too. Yeah, because I'll be in the middle of something. So um I get a lot of clarity in my business. So I'll take a shower and um I just got I get I read a lot of like the millionaire real estate agent book and I just try to get really clear. But I can't really think of like a genius idea in there the first thing that comes to my mind that like i don't get a lot of ideas in the shower because like you i listen to um content while i'm in the shower like to me that's a hack of how you you know make effective use of your time is to to learn while you're doing mindless things yeah. that you have to do one way or the other um the last thing i can think of though that stands out is um the manipulation of the consumer price index is the last thing I was um, that stands out that I learned in the shower and, and took with me is how everyone's simultaneously getting poorer yet doesn't realize it because of um, a, a number of factors, but the, the fraudulent consumer price index being one of them. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> what mindsets helped make you successful? If you could, there's a lot of mindsets. What would be one mindset mindset shift for you that made a significant impact in your business? That every day I'm uh, wrong and that my goal is to be a little bit less wrong every day. And so my, my approach is that most of the time what we believe to be true is not true. And most things that we take down to common sense or that we turn into like justism advice is actually garbage because um, life is so complex and few things are actually cause are causal. Most things are just a correlation of unrelated events that we think create an outcome. And so much of what we go through and do in life is not at all by our own design or control. And yet we choose to give ourselves credit for things that we have little to no real impact on. As in, is there, is there any reason that Hurricane Katrina would go through New Orleans but didn't cause the same level of devastation 50 miles to the west of it? Right? Is that that changes the trajectory of someone's um, future and they had little to no impact on that event, of course. And so I say that because when we believe that we're wrong, it opens us up to the idea of being less wrong each day. And therefore you seek objectivity and truth. And truth is objective whether or not we like it. And so my goal is to always seek truth because that, get, that allows us to grow. But if we think that we're right, no growth happens. Yeah, you you definitely learn like getting kicked in the teeth is the the best way to learn. I mean, it's not the it's definitely not a great way, but uh, you learn a lot from it. So, I guess my mindset shift is, um, I believe we're in heaven. So when you walk and you are emboldened and know that, um. I'm just blessed to be here. I shouldn't even be here. And so what that allows me to do is that allows me to be emboldened in my walk. And so um, 
there's no fear. When you don't have fear, when you have truth, um, that allows you to walk in a certain way. And when you think you're in heaven, like you can't lose. Does that make sense? You just can't lose. So that was my biggest mindset shift is like, nobody can stop me because I'm in, these are the things that I'm in control of. And so I just need to focus on that. So we talked about mindsets. What habits helped make you successful? If you could give me two. You're going to have to go first on that one. Uh, two habits, you said? Just okay. two. Don't have to be like, this is the habit. No, that's okay. Um, m- well, my habit is um, um, I do lead generating. And so there's times that you don't want to lead generate. And all lead generating for people out there is having conversations. I have a prescribed, like, I make phone calls. So... I make X amount of, I make 50 phone calls every day. And so I make that a habit. So, because if you don't, you won't do it. And so um, that is one habit that I do is I do um, that. And then um, another thing is I read, I make reading a habit. Um, and because you, it opens your mind. I, I, I just think totally differently just ever since I started making making reading a habit i I was going to say first for me would be learning as well yeah i I think without it um i couldn't have the philosophy of being wrong and then being less wrong of course Uh, and uh you know it's interesting somebody said to me the other day like they they asked like you have a finance and like economics background like (laughs) or something is what someone assumed and uh and and you know it's interesting i've never taken a business class um in my life and Yet, um, I would argue that I probably know as much about businesses. I have a degree in business, and you know way more about business than I do. <laughs> so, so that, but that, like, that unreasonable, um, like, unrelenting obsession with learning is what um, has caused a ton of... Um, impact in my life that's been positive of course uh, I, I can tell you that learning is not always a it has a downside to it of course as well uh, the more you learn the less you um, the fewer people that you're able to have an intelligent conversation with yeah, right, <laughs> um, right. however yeah. um, it, you know you you certainly can then learn how to um, bridge that gap yeah. uh, you know it's something that creates a new uh, a new topic to, to learn and understand and, but I think arguably more important is um, caring about people and having integrity around it is that uh, I, you know, a lot of people would, would claim that based on like my personality profile that they just assume I'm like a robot. I get accused of that from time to time. And yet the reality is I do care a ton about people. And so because of that, uh, it drives me to always do the right thing. Now, it doesn't mean that we're always in alignment on what the right thing is. However, um, my goal is to always leave people in a better place than I found them if we're both willing to do that. And uh, and so uh, I don't have any guilt about where I am with people. And I think that that then pays dividends in the future because you end up um, – doing right by someone even in the wrong situation and eventually you bridge the gap if something you know goes wrong and you can reconnect and re uh work on that resentment or you continue to level up your relationships and continue to you know be reintroduced to people who create more opportunity yeah um what consumes your thoughts on a daily basis Oh man. Are we allowed to say that three letter word? What is that? Um, let's see. S E. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the first thing I thought of was the idea that what men think about supposedly. How often is that again? Do they yeah, claim? I don't know. Yeah, that is, it's not, at least it's not true in my world. No. Um, let's see. Um, Another question can be what distracts you the most? <laughs> right. um, what, what consumes your thought? Oh, man. You know, um, on a daily basis. I'm always trying to think of, like, um, 
what's the next move? Like, what am I missing in my business? Um, where is my pain? Um, and I think about it all the time. It's, it's bad because I'll be sitting there talking to my wife and then I'll just be like, man, if I just get, you know, 10 listings or five listings a month and it's going five, you know. And so I'm always trying to think of like, what is, uh, what's the next thing to kind of, uh, I'm actually obsessed with business. Yeah. I can't it, stop thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, that's because, so what I wrote down was future. Yeah. Uh, I'm like <laughs> obsessed about the future and yeah. not in a George Jetson kind of way, but as in like, where are things going? Because my, what I think I'm actually um, uh, thinking about is providing. Yeah. And, and so for me, I, you know, teach so much right now about uh, business and about um, financials and economics and the market to, um, you know, our, our business owners within um, the company. So right now I have, I think, uh, 14 to 17 of our CEOs that I coach on a weekly basis and then do, do trainings nearly every day for, um, for agents and for business owners. And so much of it is market-based. And I see a ton of um, concerns in the market. And yet, I don't know that they're necessarily something that we need to be fearful of or like wildly concerned about. But I don't, I'm not convinced that the future from a financial and provision standpoint look better than the past for anyone who's our age. And, uh, and that's a concern of mine. So... I want to kind of piggyback on that because like all that boils down to we're saying the exact same thing. And I think what that is, is legacy. So like I'm my number one thing that I obsess over is my kids having a better situation than I had. And you're saying the exact same thing, but yours is a little darker. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It's definitely darker because I would love to tell you that I'm like, I've got a weird, I'm not convinced that we, uh, I'm not fully convinced that we should set our children up for um, financial f freedom necessarily if we have the ability to. I'm not saying that we shouldn't. I'm, I'm like undecided on that. So for me, it is um, probably it is truly a concern of future-based provisions and um, not wanting. I, I see what um, wealth inequality does for people's mental and emotional state and the decisions that people um, are, are somewhat forced into making by um, their circumstances. We know that, that the average um, longevity of um of people is largely determined by the amount of net worth that they Resources, have. Resources, yeah. And, um, you know, we were just talking about it, you know, in the in Vietnam, the average um, life expectancy is 10 years younger than it is in the U.S. We know that um, whites who have a seven-figure net worth live on average, um, you know, three-plus years longer than African-Americans do. And, and so much of that is based on time out only yeah. no white people not yeah, with yeah, high yeah. net Sorry, worth yeah. like no. white people yeah yeah <laughs> live three years longer yeah and then and then and those with a high net wisconsin, worth live even longer that's right and did you know in wisconsin like in wisconsin it's like 10 years there's like in madison wisconsin if you're an african-american jeez in the united states of america you live 10 years lo least long lo shorter than their white counterparts it, that's systemic yeah absolutely it is and and honestly because if we go back one question because i think a lot about um caring about people oddly enough um uh, you know i don't worry about my my i don't necessarily worry about my own ability to provide but i do worry about others and then the decisions that are made at the larger social scale as a byproduct of um, losing the ability or reducing the ability to provide basic needs. I and mean, we've seen that show up big time in 2020. I mean, it's just, it is, uh, it is something that has just absolutely enraged me to where um, policy is made by ivory tower, um, largely boomer whites with 
no context for what the wealth inequality gap looks like and the impact that sh- that shutdowns have or that um, taking you know resources or potential um, environmental uh, impact is and by environment I don't mean you know the 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 green initiative I mean when someone eats at school as a way to survive yeah and we don't have school we have a real systemic problem yeah and um, why are they only being able to eat that's right or (laughs) when when abuse rate for women went up by you know 30 plus percent as a byproduct of um you know lockdowns and stay-at-home orders uh what i realize is a lot of that is is based on um fear of the future and provision and and basic needs and so that's the thing i think about the most in the future is what does that look like as we continue to blunder uh, political monetary decisions what's the most common reason for people failing or giving up in your industry lack of clarity Oh, good. Thank you. That was actually what I was going to say. And I did not think you would say that. Lack of clarity. Man, that's good. They just don't know what, like, you literally right. come in, that's they right. think it's HGTV. They don't realize that once you get, it's getting to the HGTV part. Yeah. You got to get to the part where you're, you, there's two jobs. You, it's And you don't have clarity around what the actual job is. They come yeah. in here and they think they know what it is. And you know the failure that our industry has uh, that it gives everyone when they're new is the failure is we blame the person. And because we look at, we look at the um, indecision or the inaction or, um, you know, the lack of results. And we say, well, you just didn't try hard enough. You didn't uh, grind enough. You didn't make enough calls. You didn't shake enough hands, kiss enough babies. You came in with the wrong mindset. It wasn't something that you were committed to. And all that's bullshit. It's true. You're yeah. absolutely right. Because nobody's given them a playbook. You know, we, we, have, a, we have an incredible track record from a um, consistency of results standpoint when we look at onboarding and um and when we look at like over a two year period from bringing people in with zero real estate experience into their results after 24 months, it outpaces the industry by 11 X. And the reason for that is, is we actually have a prescriptive playbook, 235 different items. We just loaded again this week, 235 action steps to take in 90 days. And, um, that sounds like a lot. However, when you get licensed and you go everywhere else, what you get is nothing. nothing. And yeah. so uh, I, the reason why it's, our results are different is because I believe that, uh, that the failure of our industry is giving no direction and then um, giving generic garbage direction that doesn't provide clarity. I actually think they give misdirection. Yeah. And the reason why I think they give misdirection is because we send people to a real estate school. Yeah. Normally the school is meant to prepare you for the next year, what you're about to do. And the school doesn't prepare you for what being a real estate agent actually well, is. Well, it almost sounds like the, um, it almost sounds like the U S um, the school system to me <laughs> where it doesn't prepare you to be an adult or yeah, prepare you for yeah. a career. Right. Yeah. What well, does it prepare like, you to be an entrepreneur? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I never learned how to write a check and now thankfully I don't have to write checks anymore, but I, but I didn't learn anything about um, like investing and compound interest. I didn't learn anything about passive income. I didn't learn anything about the things that, um, you know, create a totally different um, outcome for you as an adult. We didn't learn about mortgages or uh, healthcare or any of the things that make you an adult. The same thing happens though in real estate is where, you know, you get this generic BS advice from um, a lot of these knockoff brokerages where they talk about, we just make these, they, they give you the Mike Ferry prescription of go make 20 calls or go make a hundred calls or um, whatever that generic answer is from the, the boomer who hasn't sold real estate in two decades. And the reality of it is, is that that doesn't work because 
It's Who not, do I call? What do I say? When do I call them? Enough. How often? You have that's a right. Script. How do you? That's right. Overcome objections. Yep. Like then, what, do you have a CRM? Like, yep. is it? <laughs> so yep. like we minimalize it. We make it super yeah. simple. Mm-hmm. And it's to be honest with you, it's just it's not enough. It's you, a detriment. Yeah, it, it, we it's need like, coaching. It should be have coaching. Yeah, it's like getting uh, it's like getting the IKEA furniture without the instructions totally you and saying so just we, put, put that's right just put it lefty together lucy right that's tidy. right that's right it looks like a dresser <laughs> when it's done all these parts go in to make that dresser just put it together i don't understand mike why don't you just put it together yeah lefty lucy righty yeah. tidy you should mm-hmm. that's the advice that's right. that we give them yep and yep. we you know and to be honest with you it's you're literally putting together an ikea desk absolutely absolutely my my career and yours would look totally different i mean think about it you went into real estate twice yeah, I did. And you got two different outcomes, I right? Did. And um, the, I don't know. I'm going to guess that your outcome was different because of your experience being different outside of real estate, not necessarily inside. For me, I had world class sales training and business training, and I had world class sales leaders. And if I didn't have that before I got into real estate, I think I would have a different outcome. I got that yeah, exactly. the second time yeah. when I started working for Pulte, I started yeah. getting trained and I'm, when I got in the first time, I didn't know what the yeah. job was. I just came in, I sat at my desk and I waited for people to call me. Yeah, the challenge is that, uh, that our industry right now, we're seeing this it, it play out in a really big way and it is not going well uh, for um, brokerages because what we're what we're what we have right now is this model where um where you know managing broker or like the let's call it like the owner or the ceo um is kind of passing the torch to someone like yourself or someone like me who is then um taking over to run the company and the challenge is is that 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 person who's been in the position for the last decade or 20 years has evolved and forgotten about what it was like on day one yeah. for them to be in the position. And they haven't backfilled the day one learning requirements in order for it to be taught to the person who's taking the torch and carrying it in the future. Yeah. I think of it like the Dalai Lama can't teach uh, introduction to meditation 101 because the Dalai Lama transcended when he was nine years old. Right. Yeah. He he can't go. He doesn't understand why you don't know how to meditate. Yeah. That's what it's like right now for agents who are teaching new agents, and and a lot of these legacy and uh, and transitioning brokers and and business owners in our industry is they they didn't backfill the handoff. 10 years ago when they were in the position. What's tough is like when you're an entrepreneur, that's a mindset shift. And so when you're not an entrepreneur, you can't like, you can't see what you can't see, right? Yeah. But then once you are in that, you have to stay grounded so that you can kind of go back and say, okay, this person doesn't, like they're making a decision not based on like the the vast, like just thinking, like an entrepreneur, it's just like a three dimensional thing. You just have to like look around corners for stuff. If yeah. that makes sense, it does. I, I mean, I guess I'll I'll distill it even a touch further. That just says um, training is the number one most effective thing you can do in, as a business owner because it is a leverage of time to create a multiple return on investment. Training someone as effectively as humanly possible with as much information as you know that made you successful shortens the amount of time that it takes for that person to be like you but better or just similar multiplying yourself and so that's right and so training becomes the multiplication of outcomes the challenge though is is that we've bastardized training and by that i mean everyone says they do training and the reality of it is is there are there is training from a concept perspective and then there's training from a tactical perspective god forbid that that your pilot learned conceptual how to fly a plane instead of tactical how to fly a plane because those two things would get you very different outcomes absolutely unfortunately our industry thinks that concept training is tactical training and it is not no and so what we end up with is a lot of grounded planes and and that's because in that like like i said in that broker handoff 
There is no one doing tactical training in a highly effective level. The, the, the training that, um, that you received or that others receive in a similar position to you is not adequate in having, 100, in having the most effective launch at the highest level. And it's the reason why we see the turn rate the way that it looks. And, and it's not a people problem. It is a, it is a training and ambiguity problem. We have screwed up the definition of training. Training is not concepts. You cannot teach the concepts of geometry without the tactics of mathematics. Yeah, yeah. And that's unfortunately the, the reason why agents fail and leadership fails. Yeah, I think we're, we're training on the wrong things. Absolutely, we are, without a doubt. Yeah, I can, I, 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 you, know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I can be really good at contracts and be broke. Yeah, of course. That's right. That's <laughs> so, right. but a lot of our competition is like, oh, we have contract training. We have this, all these training. Yeah, that's awesome. We do too. But that's not going to help you put food on the table. And so you have to be able to focus on what are those, what is it that the top agents are doing in order to consistently get in front of people so that you can have a consistent business. Yeah. There's got to be that playbook. Yeah. Two more. Speaking of tactics, you got me on one, dude. I'm on one about training. Sorry. What is the, <laughs> what is the number one tactic you use to stay organized? You know, that's um, when we think about habits. That's probably one of the um, most effective habits um, to have is a um, habit of organization and intentionality. Um, I was kind of ranting about it at home yesterday because um, I think organization habits are multifaceted and that the fastest way to be um, organized is to have very little to organize. Yeah. Keep Minimalism yeah. is a really damn good I'm hack organized to anyway. organization. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, we, so we don't need um, every kitchen utensil and every toy and every um, furniture and accessory and all of the other abundance of consumer culture. That's one quick, easy hack to organization. And then two is um, to have daily intentionality. So um, I, uh, so I've been you I've used for the longest time an Eisenhower matrix for organization. Um, I've been switching lately to um a, a different journal and utilizing that jour daily journal as a way to like set priority and then review priority. Um, and then we just started layering in some extra accountability where we on a group thread with the other leaders in the company um, locally will put our daily intention in what are we committed to do? And then we'll review it at the end of the day. Um, so we've just started to layer in those extra organizational habits. Um, I'm very organized, organizationally challenged. Like if you ask my wife, like we had three, a three car garage and it was just like, you could barely walk. My solution is to hire a dump truck and mm -hmm. just throw everything away mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. cause it's been stuffed in a garage. So With you bro. We don't With need you. it. You're yeah. right. So I'm not like the biggest thing that keeps me organized is uh, very simple. I use a notes app. Uh, I keep a list and every time I think of something I have to do, I put it on that list and then I review that list and I'll determine whether or not I need to do that or my EA needs to do that. And then I'll, she has a list that I share with her. And then so whenever I put stuff that I don't want to do, I put it on her list and uh, that all feeds into my calendar. Um, and then I also keep um, a tracker, which um is she takes everything off of my calendar and puts it on an Excel spreadsheet. Um, so then it gives me clarity around how many appointments and then any time appointment doesn't get met. So then I can like track like how many appointments I'm meeting, how many I met. I know this is long and boring, but Excel spreadsheet and the notes app in my calendar are my biggest things that keep me organized. Well, I mean, what I hear is though that you have a system for it and then anything you can automate, automate. It's all automated. Yeah, like, she does it, it all. It has to be. Yes, yeah, I don't like, do it. I just I, look. <laughs> when I think about organizing, um, you know, some like organizational hacks, like, you know, I order food um, from, I've got a recurring delivery every week of, uh, meals on Monday, I get an email that says 
you know, finalize your order, go in, select the meals that I want to eat. If not, they're going to ship to me, whatever the computer picks. Right. And, but that's one item of organization. I don't have to create a grocery list. Right. They're already pre-made and they're already delivered. Okay. So, um, I'm elimin elimination and automation are the two most effective ways to be organized delegation next. Yep. And then, um, not having surplus or excess or consumption yeah. is arguably one of the best ways to be organized saying no um, to a lot of things another thing is being smart like doing things when you're smart for when you're dumb yeah that's right so like the keys mm -hmm. at the door so yeah. like one thing that i noticed that before we had the podcast where i'd have to out on saturday or whenever we'd come I would have to look up your address and I would have a little level of anxiety every time I would come. And I was like, why don't I just program a stupid address on my phone so I don't have to think about it? <laughs> yeah. For like, so it took me three weeks. I was like, oh my gosh, what's this address? So I go through my text messages. Yeah. Guess what? I don't have to do that energy every week. I didn't have to expel. So just save stuff in your phone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Absolutely. It does. Use technology <laughs> as leverage. That's right. Yeah. Last question. If you achieved all of your life goals tomorrow, what would you do next? You know, I was on vacation recently, so it feels a little bit like vacation. I mean, and I haven't taken a like le legit vacation yeah. where that didn't involve work. And yeah. gosh, I don't know how long, uh, Lauren and I have been thinking about it and we're not a hundred percent convinced that we've actually ever taken vacation without work together until, um, most recently. And, um, so that's a little bit about what it feels like. I imagine, um, to yeah. accomplish all of my life goals and then, um, do something is vacation. Yeah. And so what we did was we went hiking. Um, we, uh, floated around with, um, uh, too many adult beverages on a lazy river, um, stayed up too late, ate a bunch of dessert, um, and drove around and didn't give a damn about looking at email or phone or anything else. And that's probably what I would do is I'd probably nap way more mm. and, and I would not check my phone, um, and spend way more time <laughs> with Lauren, um, than, than we do currently. Yeah. I would be on a mountain in some woods in a, I'd be glamping. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be glamping. I don't see right you as a now. glamper. I'm a glamper. I see you maybe I'm as not a, like a camper. A, a chalet, a cabin, nah, a cabin or something. Yeah. I'm, I, well, I don't know. I, Amy took us to this treehouse, and I would, I would, I could say this could be. I could, I could do this. Would you, how long do you think you could do that? Uh, so you got bored, just had to go do something. You know what? Like to be honest with you, I love what I do. Like yeah, I feel I like. So. Yeah, um, I, I feel like if like the pressure of like, you know, money and all that stuff wasn't off, I would still do it. I know. Like, um, so I, I, I do think that, but I think there would be at least about a month yeah. where I would be in a, in a, in a woods where the internet. What's the longest work. you've gone without working? Um, man, it's been a, like. Um, we used to do cruises and the reason why is cause you, I wouldn't get, I wouldn't pay for the internet. Yeah. And so that was the last time. And that was probably in 15. Okay. Okay. And so for that's a what a week. Yeah. Okay. I went a month in between jobs when I moved after college and, um, it started cool. And then by, by about like that 30 day mark. I was pretty miserable. Yeah. And I mean, I was like 23, 20, I was probably 25 years old. But I'm so at it a wasn't different like stage I was hardcore now. like this now. Well, yeah. Well, but I'm at a, I'm at a different stage. Like I, you think you could go 30 days? I don't know. I think I could. Okay. I think I could. I see. That's where like, this sounds terrible, but then I look at it. I'm like, what's my purpose? I would have to have a new purpose. Right. To me, work is creation. Yeah. Work is play. Right. I think that's one of the challenges I have is that, that we have demonized work as though it's a bad thing. When you look at what Tyler does, Tyler does some crazy shit that isn't work. And yet it is work if you choose to define it that way, right? Mm -hmm. Like you went to what, three comedy shows last week and shot photos. Oh, that was hard work, right? Like right. you got to, you got to sit in a room with three comedians and, and yes, you had an objective, but like the pretty, 
for yeah. damn good, yeah. damn good work. Yeah. Right? We're all like blessed. You got, we have a great, like we're all yeah. blessed. We can all be doing something, of course. And and yeah, so and I mean, and I'm, I'm the same amazed, way, right? Like, like we, we're yeah. all the same way, right? We get to <laughs> we get to do the things that we um, want to do and enjoy doing. I'm just not sure what I would do if I wasn't doing something like that. I would have to. I would do it again. Yeah. I would recreate. Like <laughs> at this, at the end, of, I see it now. It's a game. It's systems and models. So like I would do it with something else. It's I like really my, would. So how do you retire? So like my dad's retired and he claims to love it. I don't, I, I don't know what you do all day though. Like yeah. I would. Maybe I would do it with like, I don't know. I always wondered like. You you ever see the episode of Seinfeld where they have the panhandlers on the side no. and like have a group of no I'm playing I wouldn't do that. <laughs> That's what <laughs> you just, would do. Like yeah. I'd systematize you know, I'm playing. Like, no, I'm to be honest, when you have systems and models, like you see it in everything. So like I feel like I would like I'd have a a a bar in the Caribbean or something. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I could get on board with that. Yeah, yeah I'm a or bar like in the, uh, the mentor Caribbean. Mentor entrepreneurs, or, maybe. Or what whatever. I've always yeah. wanted to do is I feel like I'm kind of um, like a model. So I would love to take. Well, you are a ma model, male yeah, model. Yeah, for sure. No, yeah. I mean, I would love to show kids entrepreneurship, yeah. like create yeah. like a, a entrepreneurship program, um, you know, you know, just to kind of teach the systems and models. And maybe uh, there's some kids out there that have no idea. Because I feel like the education, that's not being served. For sure. So I feel like long term, I'm, I'm learning something and then I'll be able to pass that on to others. All right, Tyler, I need to know what you're doing when you uh, when you become, when you have no more goals. What are you doing afterwards? Probably. Just shuffling cards? Probably shuffling cards. Probably design a deck. Probably, I'd love to go on tour with a comedian and like just film a whole tour. So I'd probably just seek out more opportunities to just. Would you get involved and try to do stand up also or just? Hell no. Okay. I think you could do it. By the way, like, I feel like we should, are we, like, can we talk at all about, um, I mean, Tyler was just like this little guy uh, doing dope, like selling doing. roofing and uh, making some like cold calls and then working with bum real estate agents <laughs> like us. And now he's like putting out BET and comedy central content and everything else. I mean, that's awesome, bro. Just Good for you. The man. world we live in. I know, man, it's crazy. Isn't that like, dope, man? Because, I love it. Because what it what, uh, that was, what Netflix, you, like, You've got at least a comedian with a Netflix special and with a sitcom and uh, yep. and uh, a number of different uh, tours. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you're just taking what you learn, like, like just what your foundation, what you learn and you're applying it to different. Right. Yeah. I mean, just traveling with Eric and documenting him speaking is no different than documenting and traveling with some comedians and filming them speaking. Yeah. So it's, and there's an opportunity for it with everything going. So like everything, social media, you know? Oh yeah. Big time video needs everything. Yeah. Cause you guys got a few million views or something last month, right. For your, some of your release content and stuff. And, um, yeah, yeah I relevant. mean, sooner or later, Mike, we're going to have like, yeah, we're gonna, gonna Tyler. Kick us to the Kate's curb. already left us. Tyler's yeah, gonna replace us with uh, with a with a with a pygmy from Burmese instead, and we're gonna just get you the new us? staff member instead. I'm gonna, I'll have one of uh, Elon's robots. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> hey, can you send Tyler my address so that he knows how to get back here in case he tries to <laughs> tries to break up with us? <laughs> <laughs> so you would go on tour. Okay, cool. I'd probably, yeah, I'd just, I would use, if I, if it meant that I had money to do it and the resources, I would just pay for access to somebody. And then I just want to like document yeah. a weekend show. You're like, you would be like uh D rock with, with Gary V, right? You would just like yeah. hit, hit that person up in DMS and work for free essentially if you had to. Yeah. Okay. Create yeah. for free. I mm. like, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, what would you do? That's one one thing my business coach told me was like, if what's something you enjoy doing that you don't want to hand off to somebody yeah. to do, and then 
what's something that you enjoy doing that if you didn't get paid, it wouldn't like bother you. Yeah. And like use those questions to kind of guide you into the direction of like what kind of roles you want to find. I like that. I mean, That's awesome. I, because I'm doing that now. And, yeah. um, and I, I do love that. You know, I've talked to Adam about that as well. And he's talked to, you know, about project U, his like, his like group life coaching program that he does. And he's like, that that's is, his that is it. Yeah. 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 It, it makes you, it's okay. You go to work every day. Like, yeah, there's no, there's no pull there's no at all. Tug. There's no energy. That's right. Yeah. It's all just, it gives, it's actually giving Absolutely. energy it giving. So, yeah. And then that's what I mean. That guy's got a he's a ball of energy. So obviously whatever he's doing, <laughs> yeah. he's doing it right. So I'm tired. Just when yeah. I watch, I'm like, man, I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> like checking my email literally <laughs> makes me tired. But I have 14 coaching calls on Wednesday and I am amped. If you ask me to check 14 emails, I promise you that it will be exhausting to be. Yeah. Yeah. Totally it's, it's sucking. Life yeah. sucking. Yep. I do think it's especially when coaching with somebody it's important and like you're talking to somebody it's important to like when they're listing off everything that they're doing or what they want to do i think after recapping it back to them to make sure that you understand you're doing how many tasks and then like which one do you like the most yeah so that because like that's what's going to be, that's what's going to stick around and that's what's going to last. Not necessarily just because you can do everything doesn't mean you should do everything. Yeah. Right. So it is just like identifying what people like doing within their role so that you can try to get them to do more of that and then delegate the other stuff. It's what you were saying. Earlier. Energy is a big thing. So yeah, yeah absolutely. focusing on the maze. Focus on those A's and that's yeah. what it is. Like yeah. if you focus on your A's, it doesn't matter. Those F's, you're not going to delegate those F's. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, in school, they didn't, you couldn't do that, but in business you can, sure. if I suck at this, I'm going to delegate it and not, they better be an A. Yeah. yeah. 